Uh, sometimes we have to learn with God just to walk through the valleys and the mountains and the experiences of life. Because life has a way of doing that. Life has a way of bringing into our situation uh, both positive and negative things. We are all victims at times of, of circumstances that surround us because we live in a world that is imperfect. And so as long as we live in this world, we may live in it. We're not of it if we know Jesus Christ. But I, I am so glad that God has given us the promise of not only eternal life, but also a blessed life even here and now. I've decided a long time ago I'm not waiting to get to heaven to live a good life. Amen. Heaven's already promised to me. I, I just said, Lord, I'm going to live a great life now. Amen. That's why we bought those big letters on the outside of the church that you almost can't get in the building without walking by them so that it gets branded into your spirit that life is great. In spite of everything that's happening in the world, it's a great life. As long as you have Jesus Christ, amen. Amen. Come on, somebody. You, you don't want to be half full. You want to be filled to the brim and running over with God and let God do great and mighty things. Praise the Lord. I've had the privilege of preaching literally around the world, and I can truly say that there is no greater church I enjoy preaching to than Great Life Church. Amen. All of my friends who preach here, they say the same thing. Gets them into trouble when they go back to their home church in fact some of them but I love to preach to this crowd because it's a hungry crowd and I said that to say this that wherever God is desired God will show up if you put out the welcome mat for God God is going to come amen the Bible says the Holy Spirit who is the presence of God in the earth today the Holy Spirit of God God the Father God the Son God the Holy Spirit is represented by the Holy Spirit in the earth today if you feel anything in this room tonight we call it the presence of God or we'll call it the anointing it is because God has been welcomed into this house amen hallelujah it's because your praise has been a sweet smelling fragrance in the nostrils of God and so it, the desire desire of your praise is what will welcome God into your life but not only in your church but everywhere you go in your home at the grocery store wherever God takes you he wants to know that he's wanted that he's valued that he's appreciated that he's loved that he's worshiped that he's adored hallelujah I'm gonna say well is God on an ego trip no but he did create you and I to worship him hallelujah Hallelujah. And he said, if we don't praise him, he's going to make the very rocks cry out and the rocks will begin to praise him. Can you imagine that? Uh, if you're walking down the street and you cross paths with a bunch of stones on the side of the road in front of a church on the other side, and all of a sudden the rocks are crying out because the church on the other side won't cry out. But I'm telling you tonight, church, when you demonstrate a desperation for God, when you show God that he is desired, it's not just the few. It's not just a few radical praisers. It's every chair, every seat, every television, every computer, every smartphone, everything that there's someone's watching this service tonight on. When you desire God, God will always show up because he loves to be in the atmosphere where he's welcome. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Sometimes we get going so much that we can be guilty of not accommodating God in our services. Churches that so synchronize their services to the very second on their schedules that very often leave little time for God to move. Leave very little time for God to be welcomed in their midst. Can I remind you tonight that the only reason and the very reason we gather together is because of God. 
The very reason we are alive today is because of God, whose builder and maker is God. We thank God for his goodness to us. And so wherever God is recognized and received, he is going to make himself at home and make himself welcome. But God never comes just to come. He always comes with a plan. He always comes seeking someone who needs a touch from God. And it's almost as if it was a magnetic pull that there's something in the Holy Spirit of God that the more you pull on that anointing and the more you have something in your life that is saying God I need you in my life I need to have you in this situation it's like a magnetic pull for God that he's drawn to you can you say amen it's like a squeaky hinge gets the oil and God hears your cry and he hears your praise and he hears your prayer and he responds hallelujah Where God is not welcome or not recognized, God is not going to stick around. God is not going to, well, he's omnipresent. Yes, he is. But there's a great teaching in that understanding of the ability of God being everywhere, but not doing everything because he's not welcome. Jesus was also God. Jesus was also in Nazareth. And Jesus also could do no mighty work in Nazareth because there was nobody in Nazareth that made him feel welcome. He was like a hometown, uh, uh, not the hometown hero. He was like the, the, the little guy that left, came back, and nobody, is not that the carpenter's son? Is not that the one who... You know, and there was no recognition of the anointing and the glory upon Jesus. Had they recognized Jesus, uh, he would have touched lives all around Nazareth, but they didn't. They failed to recognize him, and wherever God is not recognized, he will remain silent and probably will not even remain there in the position of demonstrating his power. Are you with me tonight? And so the people of God... Uh, and the people in that time, they respond to, the, to wherever Jesus shows up. You can read it throughout the Gospels, everywhere that Jesus goes. The Bible said thr- throngs and crowds of people would follow him. Whenever Jesus would walk into a house, there would be people that would follow him into the house. Whenever he was going down the road, uh, there would be what they called the press. You know, CNN and NBC and Fox News, they were always following him. No, it's not the press. The press actually means a crowd and uh, and and the crowd would follow him whenever he was making his way somewhere they would f- press in to see what was happening they didn't necessarily have faith in God but they had heard about the miracles of God they had heard uh, contrary to what the religious leaders and the scribes and Pharisees would say that there really was a son and his name was Jesus and he really was the son of the living God and he really was the Messiah and contrary to what a religious scribe might might say who are you to heal on the sabbath day and jesus says is it harder for me to save someone's sins or heal someone's body he said it really doesn't matter when you're god you supremely rule over everything one day rolls into the next and one miracle rolls into the next hallelujah and so that's how it moves and so wherever jesus went crowds of people followed him you know we would call that success when you have people who follow you, you know, there's, there's got to be something that they're following. There's got to be some reason they're following Jesus. It's got to be something that, that's happening. He was, he was successful, but not in the world standards. He was successful in the demonstration of the power and the miraculous working of God. Can you say amen? But just because people follow you doesn't mean they're all in your corner. You can have a crowd, but not necessarily have everybody in your corner. The religious folks, they followed Jesus too, but they really didn't stand by his side. In fact, they opposed him and they oppressed him and they came against him. Oftentimes, the bigger you grow and the more successful you become. If you're a business owner, if if you have an entity of some kind and the bigger business you grow. I heard a man in the church the other day who has a business and there's a competing business business in the county and the competing business is is coming against his business and I thought isn't that just the way the devil works you know just grow your own business amen mind your mind your own business grow your own business quit trying to ride on the coattails of someone else's success let them find their own way and 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 if you're really worth your weight in in gold then you'll, you'll you'll find your way can you say amen come on are there any business owners know what I'm talking about 
Something about success can breed contempt. They don't know the price you paid to get to where you are. They don't know the early morning, the late hours. They don't know the times that you've had to sit over your kitchen table with your business checkbook in hand and write out all your employees' checks until you realize there was nothing left for you at the end of it. They don't know that. They don't know the tears you've shed and the nights you've cried and the early morning hours. They don't know any of those things. And so Jesus might have had lots of people around him, but they weren't all in his corner. They weren't all on his side. Some of them were just looking to see what's going to happen next and, and what miracle might happen. That's the kind of crowds that follow Jesus. He attracted skeptics. He attracted doubters. He attracted naysayers. He attracted gossipers. He attracted people. And, they, and, and his purpose was to come and bring hope and their purpose was to come and hinder what Jesus was trying to do I'll get there in just a moment to my text I'm just working my way up let me tell you something religion will never give you hope quit quit saying uh, well I go to church religiously Oh, I've got religion or give me that old time religion or whatever song you want to sing. It's not about a religious encounter. It is about a personal relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. It's about coming to know him as your heavenly father. It's not about rules and it's not about regulations and it's not about the do's and don'ts of living right or living wrong. It is about a walk with God church. When you have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ, when you're connected to the vine oh hallelujah I feel like preaching tonight when you're connected to the vine you begin to know that the life is in the vine and the greatness of God flows out of heaven down into your life and that's what makes you and I great as long as we're connected to Jesus Christ there will be a life flow out of him and into you and I well what does it do it'll give you joy like you never known it'll It'll give you laughter like you never laughed. It'll give you peace like you've never known before. When you're connected to Jesus, he'll give you hope like you never had before. You got to stay connected to the vine. It's not a religious experience. It's not just a, I got to go to church like I go to mass. I go to church because I love Jesus. You don't think I know you could do a thousand other things tonight? You don't think I know the devil has you spinning, you know, has people spinning so much. Not you, I didn't mean you, but he has people spinning like a, like a hamster on a spin wheel thing. He's got people running here and running there and, and hoping that maybe they'll just stay out of church. If I can keep them out of Wednesday night service, then they won't get their praise on. If I can keep them out of church, they won't get more word inside of them. If I can keep them away from gathering with the saints of God, I can isolate them. And if I can isolate them I can begin to dismantle them piece by piece by piece uh, until there's nothing left of them uh, but a wasted old fat old saint sitting by the side of the road uh, who has no hope uh, and no future outside of God uh, are you with me tonight religion will never give you hope Jesus came with a message of hope he came saying, I can fix that problem. I can help you through this. He loves to walk into our messed up lives and our chaotic situations. That's what Jesus does best. He loves to walk into your problem and your trial and your test and say, I'm here. How can I help you? Why do you think we need to make him feel welcome? Because that's what brings him in. That's what invites him in today, church. People from all walks of life followed him. Different cultures followed him. Different language groups followed him. And the clouds would grow so big. At times, one time, the crowd grew so big that he had to actually get off the beach and get into his boat and begin to minister from the boat because the crowd was too great. Another time, the crowd was so great that he said, I, I don't know how, you know, or, or the disciples said, I don't know how we're going to feed them all. And Jesus said, the crowd is great. We'll just see a miracle happen here. Another time, the crowds were so great that he said, you know, I always also need to go and refresh myself let me take myself and set myself apart so that I and myself can be refreshed and reinvigorated and re renewed and restored inside 
People had needs back then just like people have needs today. People needed a touch from God. They came after him. They walked and followed him. The Bible says they followed him. And Je- because they knew, they knew something. They knew that Jesus had something on him that they did not have on them. They knew that they, they couldn't understand it because their religious mind was interfering with their spiritual heart. Their religious mind was trying to put it through the filter of the senses, but they didn't understand that in addition to the fifth sense, there's a sixth sense called faith. There's a sense that God says, with the five, you'll never understand this, but with the sixth sense called faith, he said, have faith in God. If you have faith in God, you can move mountains, church. If you've got faith in God, you can say unto this mountain, be thou removed. If you've got faith in God, you can command cancer to go. If you've got faith in God tonight, you can part red seas. You can cause things that are standing in your way to move out of your way. All you need is a little faith in God. There was a woman at a well came and she saw Jesus there and he knew her. He knew her because he knows us and he knew her situation and the woman at the well, she had need of Jesus. She didn't have need of another bucket of water. She needed a water where he said, you'll never thirst again. There was a leper sitting by the side of the road. That leper would have died of leprosy had he not had an encounter with Jesus Christ. That woman would have had an, without an encounter with God, the son of God that day, she would have gone on from her fifth husband to maybe her sixth to maybe her seventh, trying to find her purpose and her fulfillment in another man and another relationship relationship and another adulterous affair but Jesus came to her and he said everything you think you need you don't need what you need is what only I can give you I can give you water hallelujah that you'll never thirst again they had an awareness that Jesus had something that they didn't have even though they followed him some of them weren't even sure why they followed him but you know the church today is a whole lot like that We need a well, and we need an encounter with God, and we need a place. Here's the problem with a lot of church people. You know, if I went to church for church people, I'd probably stop going to church. Can I I just be honest with you? Sometimes church people are like the worst people. Angry and ornery and... I know, I know what you think. You think church people are just like angels. Most difficult encounters we've ever had in ministry was with church people. But I'm okay with that. Because the most difficult encounters Jesus ever had was with church people. That's what it was like. The church today is really a place just like that woman came to. It's a well. But the problem is a lot of church people come, but they don't bring anything to draw water with. And and, and, and when you don't have anything to draw water with, what are you going to draw water with? You come empty handed. Thank God there's somebody in your row that brought a ladle or brought a bucket or brought something that they can draw on God. I'm talking about drawing on God today. I'm talking about drawing on the presence of the Holy Spirit. I'm talking about making Jesus feel welcome in your, in your life and in your home. Did you come to church tonight empty handed or did you come to church tonight with something to say, I'm tired of what this old world's been giving me. I'm tired of the same old and same old. I've come to draw something uh, that if I draw on that uh, I'll never need to draw again hallelujah and here's the good news if you've got someone around you uh, that brought something to draw spill it on some of them hallelujah everybody in this world is thirsty they all need to drink of this place called the well they're going to try to fix themselves you can't fix yourself you can't fix yourself you can go lie on a black leather couch give the guy your mastercard and 79 dollars an hour whatever they charge now and hope that he's going to fix all your problems he can't fix all your problems listen when you come to the well you come with something to draw with 
When you come to God, you come with something. You come to, with something. Don't, don't, we don't sit here because you know, why, you know why churches exist? They exist for people that are hurting. They exist for people with pain. They exist for people that are lost. That's why I'm here. That's why you're here. Once we were lost, but now I'm found. Once I was blind, but now I can see. That's why churches exist. Churches exist so people can come and have their problems solved. Their broken hearts healed. Their pain-filled lives restored. So wherever Jesus was, the crowd would press into his presence. And broken they would come. Emotionally broken they would come. Religiously bound they would come. And they would come because they didn't know him well, but they knew enough that there's something about this man that could bring healing to them. And so they followed him. My prayer, church, is that the fire of God would be so incredible in this house that we don't have to have social media to get to draw a crowd. We don't have to put a banner on the front lawn. We don't have to run a TV ad. We don't have to put a billboard. We don't have to have any of that stuff. When God, and God is moving, but let me just take it. When God moves at the level that we are pressing into, we're press we're saying god it's good but it's but we're still we're still hungry for more and when we just let the god we're taking the brakes off we're taking the seat belts off we're taking everything that hinders off and we're saying god just move they're going to come in from the north and the south and the east and the west they're not going to need a radio ad they're not going to need a billboard they're not going to need a social media they're not going to need a candy box they're not going to need anything they're just going to say i heard i don't know who this jesus is but i know there's something about him that he's got that i don't have and if i don't have it and i want it i'm going to go to the one who has it and his name is Jesus hallelujah glory to God did you ever notice that minor sicknesses are most often visible on the outside and major sicknesses are often invisible on the inside you can get the measles you know you don't freak out over the measles because you know that Hey, you're going to have a few red dots for a few days and then they're going to go away. You can get the chicken pox. You can get mumps. You can get shingles. Some of you had shingles before. But you know it's not going to kill you. It's going to be painful for a few days, but you're going to, you're going to deal with it. Oftentimes, the minor things are visible and the major things are invisible. So you can look at people and they can look all good on the outside, but be totally in diseased spiritually on the inside. You can look at people and say, you know, they seem to have a lot of money, but you don't know what's going on on the inside. Uh, Jesus said, I would rather see something on the outside than to see someone on the inside dealing with something like that. He said, at least on the outside, it's visible and you can deal with it. When it's on the inside, it's a whole lot more of an issue that's got to be taken care of. And so uh, people can look good. Their bank account can be full, full of money. They can own multiple homes, cars, jets, planes, whatever they want. But inside, they need a savior. They need Jesus. Uh, there are people all over Hernando County, Florida tonight that need an encounter with Jesus. Hallelujah. And when, the, when, the, when Jesus was at this room, the Bible describes the room. And it said the room was so full that they were packed all the way to the door that's the numbers of people including the religious folk that were coming in just because they had heard something very powerful about this man have you ever been to a place like that other than maybe a concert you see the crowds but where's the churches where people are fighting at the doors to get into the seats this is one of them. Amen. But this man was relentless. 
This man whose back was on his bed, this man was so unwavering that he refused to look at his situation. The Bible says he was paralytic. He was paralyzed. He was a he was, uh, he was a paralegic and so his legs probably from his waist down he had no ability to move himself around and so he had a board somebody bring me my board quick nicholas he had a board and on the board is where he lie this man you know what i love about this man is because he knew that he was not going to settle for the life sentence of a physical infirmity. I love this man because he said, I may be this way right now, but I'm not staying this way. I heard that there's a man called Jesus. I heard that people are following him. And someone told me the other day that he's going to be at 123 Smith Street and he's going to be teaching the principles of the Torah, or the principles of God's word. And so I'm not going to give up and I'm not going to quit. I just need a miracle. This is not my lot in life. I'm not going to be a victim. I'm, I'm, I'm a fighter. I'm, I'm, I'm going to run after this thing. I, I don't receive what I've got. I, I'm not going to keep it. It's not mine. It's something the devil put on me. And I'm going to fight to be free from it tonight. Is there anybody here saying it's not normal to be sick? It's a lie from the devil. And he said, I must get to that house. We need to learn to fight back once in a while. Come on, church. Come on. You know what it means to, to get back. Sometimes we've grown so complacent and so comfortable in church. We got too much padding on the seats and, and we've just kind of made the house of God just a comfortable place. We need to get back to the place and saying, Lord, everything I'm going through, this is not your plan for me. This is the devil trying to stop me and I'm not going to let him because I'm a fighter. I fight the fight of faith. I'm going to fight back. He, I may be paraplegic. I may be limited. I I may be going through something. I may need help today, but I'm not staying on that bed. I'm going to get up. Ah, you're going to do a miracle in Jesus' name. And so he began to take action. The problem was, is that even still, with his passion to get to Jesus, he still needed help. He needed someone. He needed a David Tuttle who could hold a rope. He needed a Chip Ashton who could hold a rope. I'm calling the muscle guys now. Where's my big security friend back there with the muscle? Josh, you and the other guy. Come on. I need some rope holders. You see, he couldn't get there all by himself. He still needed someone who could say, I'll pick up that, that, that rope and help to carry you. So you get a rope, you get a rope, Josh, you get a rope. Do I need someone else? Aaron, you come. You're a mighty strong police officer. Come, 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 come. Hallelujah. God, just let him not fall off. Just keep him, Lord. Keep him. Come on, you need to get that rope wrapped around you. Don't lift him yet. Don't lift him yet. Just a moment because because he could stay on that mat the rest of his life if he wanted to. But he got some friends. He got some men who said they believe just like he believes. In fact, the Bible says that Jesus spoke to all of them. Amen. And he said that, that, that their faith is what got them there. But it didn't stop there because you have to be like a Bartimaeus or you have to be like him. I'm sure there was a time that he needed a holler for help. I'm sure the four men who were helping him, they didn't know until he made it known to them guys I need you I need you to help me there's a there's a miracle waiting for me at a house just down the street I need you to help me I can't get there by myself I, I need somebody I don't need a liar I don't need a gossip I don't need a cheater and I don't need a thief I need a friend I need someone who has faith in God who believes like I believe that even when you get to the front door of the house even if it's crowded we're gonna find another way in because I'm a fighter and I'm not gonna let it stop me